Hello, potential listening audience of one. I speak for the first time ever directly to the recording that follows here. I have taken the time recently to listen to a few of the 15 preceding, or 16? I'm not sure. This is one of those. In other words, I started from episode one of Do You Have a Point? and got to hear and realized that I had overlooked the fundamental value of the review show that I used to use to try to thoroughly uh, explain some of the dangling threads and, and thicker ideas that I bungle as I try to enunciate that which matters to me in life. So why am I talking in this introduction to anybody else? Well, because I think I have overlooked um, the communicative value of explaining who might want to listen to something past the minute and six seconds if you got this far that you've already invested and in the next episode I'm so emotional there are moments that I know I was specifically not talking about one thing or two things because they would cause me to break down and I probably should talk about things that make me break down once in a while just to not wall that side of myself off from other people's um, interpretation, I guess. I mean, it's no, no way embarrassing to me. It's just a lot of not transferring any knowledge, but just emotional wretching. Uh, I don't know how interesting that is to anybody. So... Rather than breaking down, I walk away from subject matters that are causing my lip to quiver. And this episode's filled with that. So, it might not be of value to those who think I'm already quite uh, in need of consultative care. Aware of that though I be, in small chunks I find ways to tell you how I was weak in front of the universe, but now feel strong. And that, if anything, is the transition I'm trying to make. Knowing that just being me is enough to feel strong. So if those sorts of uh, vulnerabilities sound familiar, then this might have value. Um, and I, it's Phoebe's birthday, so there's some celebratory. It's not all downer. But it's intensely uh, personal. So know that. Hello, universe. It is 8.58 on the 11th of August in the arbitrary designation of year 2022. Which means there's exactly 182 minutes left in, well... There are less than that, probably now, 181 minutes left in my dog's 11th birthday. Happy birthday, Phoebe! Your champagne birthday, if I remember my socializing days correctly. But, uh, I didn't get on to talk about Phoebe's birthday. And I do intend to cut this one short or apply the pause button liberally because she still needs to go down to the tennis courts with me so we can see how much energy she has to chase the ball inside the tennis courts um, for her last probably birthday excursion ever and it's funny because it's not a morbid sense of Phoebe's prognosis I mean she has a tumor the size of a cantaloupe, and that's just the big one. She's uh, she's given me the one gift I asked for from this universe. I said, just let Phoebe make it to her 11th birthday, and I'll be okay with it, the rest of it. And uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know what happened today that uh, sent me into. <sighs> barely keeping it together, emotional range. 
Actually, I do know what happened. And this is a phenomenon that I don't, I don't know what to say about. Nothing leaves me more mm, with a fear of foreboding sensibility than these days when I wake up <clears throat> and my sleep schedule's all fucked up right now because I've been working overnights sometimes. But i am spent a good chunk of today sleeping, waking up roughly an hour and a half ago. And sometimes when you sleep in your irregular patterns, in other words, if you're used to sleeping through the night and then have to catch your sleep during the day, that alone can be enough to exhaust you, I think, to just cark out and dream nothing. And you wake up almost feeling like you were so exhausted your body just had to recharge at the cellular level. No time for dreaming, no energy for dreaming. But then there are those nights when, or days as it were, when I wake up and I oftentimes will have this moment of consciousness where I, I enter this space and think, oh, I can't wait to remember my dreams here. And I can pull threads of the night's adventures out often, especially if it's a dream that's recent and I'm trying to somehow categorize that opportunity to remember it for that fleeting moment. Well, the most likely chance I have of capturing that is waking up wanting to remember it, which I assume means that I've been lucid dreaming. <laughs> and... Uh, and usually that's the case, because the dream that I'm trying to remember is the most vivid one I'm pulling in. Whatever it may be. Maybe I run into an old friend or whatever in dreamland. Or I have a particularly adventurous moment with somebody who matters. So I want to have that moment recalled in this space. But when I wake up with that thirst for wanting to recall my dream, for whatever reason, and it's just black... Like, I don't even have color or sound imagery. I have nothing. It's like I'm blocked off. Well, those days aren't that disturbing. But once in a while, not only am I blocked off, but I'm filled with dread. And that's how I woke up today. To the point I literally have spent at least 30 minutes since I woke up, sobbing uncontrollably about what I don't know. There's no, there's no connection to this emotion for me. I don't know how I can be overwhelmed with fear, dread, and and sorrow from dreaming and yet it's it's so tangible that I felt myself breaking down to the point I went into my room for a cry session and couldn't stop for a half hour even now it's hard to hold my shit together <laughs> and if you give your dream life the sort of <clears throat> space in your reality and credibility in your reality that I do. I'll tell you one of the most alarming situations to be in is to be blocked off from that relationship. To have that support system invalidated for any reason leaves you completely unmoored. And at worst in states of emotional turmoil that you can't associate with actual proceedings in this 3D reality space. <laughs> you know, and, and when, I, when I go through the emotional, when I release the emotional composure, as it were, and allow the emotions to overwhelm me, I actually noted the clock, thinking I don't want to cry for the next whatever. 
and it wasn't for 28 minutes until I could see the clock again. I mean, we're talking like broke up with my girlfriend cry level. I, honestly. So I'm thinking, okay, am I finally through the grieving session now that I've arrived on Phoebe's 11th birthday? Did I have this daily routine of walling off how much I'm going to miss this dog? That when she finally made it to this date, I thought, okay, that's all the bargain I asked from the universe. So from here out, every day is more than I asked for. I don't know, maybe that's it. Maybe that's how truly consequential Phoebe's presence in my life has become. I can't say till, till she's gone. It's impossible to have the perspective of what you've got until it's gone. I really think that's a fair sentiment. And I wouldn't want to underestimate how much it matters that I respect that sentiment for her. But respecting uh, Phoebe's sentiment without indulging her completely on her birthday seems a little uh, slippery, a little not necessarily embracing the best self I know to be. And the best self I know to be is the only one that's going to appreciate how much Phoebe matters while she's here. Is Phoebe and I enjoying that space together. So walk to the tennis courts we will, now that it is... Uh, what time is it? Oh, look at that. It's 9.06. And... Wait. 9.07. Hey, it was 9.07 and we were 9.07 into the recording. Well, that synchronicity says it's time to take Phoebe to the courts. But this is episode 175. 175. I wonder if I've done 175 of anything other than routine practice of certain lifelong pursuits. I've certainly hit 175 golf balls. I've certainly practiced the piano for 175 hours. But 175 recordings of self-indulgent diatribe soliloquizing, 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 soliloquy delivering nonsense? Well, actually, when you put it that way, I would have bet I was up to 175 of these. So with that 10 minutes of, what did you just talk about? Pause. Well, the uh, tennis courts, as has been the situation lately, are not only incapable of accommodating my oh so I'm going to take these all over with my dog routine that I'm used to. But there wasn't even room for me to go down and hit serves. I mean, all eight courts are taken at 9 o'clock on Thursday night? And someone's hitting on the wall? Oh my god! Ugh. I mean, I love that tennis is having a resurgence since the, uh, since the quarantine, self-imposed quarantine. Uh, because tennis is a great game. And is accessible to everybody who can move. Uh, and yet, <laughs> in the best public tennis court situation I've ever lived, five blocks away from eight courts, a wall, and an intensely present competitive tennis community, I'm now in a situation where I literally have to queue up to get on my own public courts. <sighs> so... Needless to say, with Phoebe in tow, there was no time for patience. So back we are. Phoebe has had her ground beef, um, dinner du jour for her birthday 11-11 celebration, and now we sit in separate rooms because I can't deny her the air conditioning after the amount of energy she just put into our excursion. She does get wiped out without much effort. So she is on the verge of 
<sighs> exhaustion, if not already there. So she's out in the living room with the air conditioner on, full blast, blowing her straight in the face. And I'm in the bedroom, admittedly sweltering, because no air conditioning and whatever temperature this is. I don't take to humidity and heat very kindly. But endure them I will, because... I feel like I have some things to say. And I know I have some things to explain. And I also believe I have some internal discovery to share. Um, but I think one of the things I realized <laughs> going into this, I knew one thing I had to do was walk back over what I had done to explain where I was going or what I was up to. Because I do not speak A to B I do not speak A to E by going to B, C, and D well I go A to E to M to F to D to R and somehow it does have consistency inside of what I'm trying to present personally but I know oftentimes that's because I'm thinking while I'm speaking and my thoughts aren't always becoming part of my speech pattern, so I may even just skip through stuff because I'm thinking it, not sharing it. And, uh, you know, you know, do you? Well, if you don't, I'm about to tell you what you should know. Sometimes I think that... <sighs> that I am using this media, as it were. Or, and I don't mean media. I mean this method of, of communal outreach. If, if I put something in a public domain, tack something on a tree in a park, and now know that that's there to be seen, but nobody else even knows this is a park, this is just an area that I have discovered with my dog that I've never ever seen another human being actually within the territory? Have I just announced something to the universe? Or have I just failed to reach out as the circumstance would truly allow if I were more innovative than to think, well, I thought of this and then I didn't try to think of anything else, so this is what I came up with, so this is where I'm going to stay. I'm going to tack notes on trees and assume that everybody who needs to see it is coming by and reading it. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I guess. I mean, at least let's say that this is the 175th attempt to justify the fact that this isn't enough. <laughs> uh, and tomorrow, uh, I, I will be explaining why this isn't enough and what I'm doing about it. But for tonight, let's just call it the night before I actually engage in what comes next. And in so doing, I feel like I need to explain all the stupid shit I've said up until now. Since, really, most of it, tomorrow, could be totally different. And now, of course, it could totally be different. I'm not going to be a 180 degree different thinking, different believing, different feeling person tomorrow than I am right now. But when I say it could be totally different, I realize that I'm going to put myself in a position tomorrow to experience something I've never experienced before. I know going in that that's part of the intent. And if you're willing to experience something that you know will challenge you to see the world in a new way, but you don't know what is at risk to be threatened to have to change, well, you're left wondering how vulnerable you might be. How much of what I believe to be true, how much of what I've come to rest upon as the nest of thought that I think I'm unwaveringly committed to in this form how much of that is stable enough to take on this challenge 
I have no idea. I just know that whatever stability is necessary, I've built at least that much. And uh, I, I waver between so excited that I'm at least enough of myself in this moment to proceed but so unsteady about how much I know I still don't understand and will have to accommodate to fully realize how much it means to be a human being in this version of Earth, this 8675309 Earth sphere. And I think that vulnerability is probably the life plan obstacle I most have to overcome. Believing in yourself is tough. God, why am I so emotional today? Fuck. I've always said I've always said that it was it's so easy I'm trying to compose myself, but it's so easy to see the gap other people have denying themselves who they really are. I've always just been able to spot that, that vulnerability, but I've never been able to just expose it from within, you know? <sighs> oh, I wish I knew where all this was coming from. I don't know. This is probably the worst possible time to record it again. Because I don't even know what thoughts going to send me into collapsible land. I just have this this fear of <sighs> devastation and I can't escape it's just like a boy gets it on all my thoughts but here let's see if I can fucking pull my shit together and stuff you know baby and I'm not trying to deny my emotional context believe me if you cried as much as me I had devices to try to switch out of this too all right, all right. Why do I why do I think it's all my fault? Well, I think the biggest issue we face, civilizationally, at least in America, as a white male, from what I've observed in this context, which is a very privileged and top of the charts, looking down upon thy situational winds that you didn't ask for, but you got anyway. All of that shit taken into account. You know what? There's still no fucking sense of responsibility and accountability at all. And I'm one of the slipperiest motherfuckers around. So, when I say it's all my fault, it's because I was so willing to play the game of, well, what can we do here to think of how it's other people's responsibility slash Not having the courage to take accountability for my own presence on this planet as it is interchanged with the reality it has been presented to interact with, that's simply my biggest regret in life. 
it, I don't I don't even know how to look back on those decades of of standing up for nothing and presenting myself as whatever was the easiest method of cloaking how disconnected from everything I felt the ways that I could so easily see how somebody else needed to be propped up and just swoop in and fill that role until ultimately I realized I didn't have the capability to turn that skill set on myself and I was so disappointed in the moment when I came to realize how much self-loathing I had accumulated from these one-off moments of, of being of being cloaked and I say one-off but I, I don't mean one-off I mean it became a lifestyle and it became a coping mechanism for thinking I had failed to provide anything contributory in my presence here I felt like I had opportunities to bring out the best in other people and had never figured out the opportunity to bring out the best in myself and after some level of deciding I no longer had enough determination it's hard to know what sat me to the core to the point I quit I don't know if it was 9-11 maybe it was Sandy Hook maybe it was I don't know maybe it was just daily droning of lies and manipulation that I knew I was susceptible to falling for and in some ways completely brainwashed because of but it's not as if I have clear dissociative memories in those times but I do know this is when I started hearing voices like I had a, a period of time when I, I, I really expected I had been going crazy for a little while and was waiting to see how crazy I was going to get and the hearing voices part was a big part of it but at the time I mean something in the earth was wrong I, I and if huh, there there was a new level of of um, how do you describe what you feel are are the overtures the the omens the signals from greater confluence of forces than you're even able to perceive but enough repetition of a dissociative pattern starts to gain your attention for fleeting moments and you start to notice variants that you've never felt before well I felt those moments with planet earth all the time and I to this day I justify it by thinking they must have been drilling underneath me or something but whatever it is the voices stopped finally although once in a while they do return but when they return now I'm not so scared of what that means I don't really even care and it's never been something that when I hear the, the whispers is more appropriate though sometimes they are audibly interruptive but it's more like you, you, you hear a, an almost continuous stream of 
conversation in another language that you can't quite understand, but you pick up a little bit of. I could almost tell you the subject matter of what I'm hearing, but I have no idea what words are being used. And, uh, and, uh, and you can chase it down. It has a source. It's not you. That's the part that starts to make you think you're crazy. But when you finally discover its source, nothing's there. I mean, it's just... And in fact, a lot of times, you can rhythmically interpret something nearby, say the refrigerator's hum, as providing cues within these dissociative voices. But the the if that's the trigger, it's not the explanation that fully integrates what's happening in your head. So you think you're crazy, you know. I mean, fuck, what else you got? And, uh, and, and then the Mandela effect hit. And, you know, I don't give a shit what people think about the Mandela effect. If you've lived through it, it's, it's as alienating a sensibility as you can be prevent, pre presented. Because all of a sudden things you have experienced are no longer valid. I still think this is a CIA mindfuck somehow. I really do. Because it's a tangible 3D experience, so it has to have a tangible 3D source. I, I just don't see how it plays out any other way. Because if it's mystical, it's mystical to a level that's shocking. And even considering the potential culpability here, the CIA's ability to manipulate your thought, well, that's shocking. Pause. But the Mandela effect was the final moment of self-realization. I had been wrong in where I had indulged my life's thought bubbles in denying the mystical. And I had also been wrong in denying the authoritative presence in my life, the media's integrity. I mean, I was collapsing a lot of sort of <sighs> foundational pillars. I mean, I say sort of because I never felt foundationally pillared upon anything other than the need to minimize the damage I was capable of by giving a little bit of myself but never giving a lot of myself to anybody because ultimately the wreckage that certain people would accumulate when I abandoned them in circumstances they had um, come to rely upon I, uh, I had no shame there and, I mean, I had shame. Jeez, I still hold harbor shame. There was a lot of shame there. There was just enough disconnect internally to keep telling myself, these actions aren't who I really am. While I accumulate action after action after action that shows, well, you know, fuckface, I think at some point that's the biggest lie you're living. And <clears throat> I guess it's 30 years of declining your expectations of both the world and yourself that finally lead you to a point to say I, I, I have nothing here of connectivity left to even think could spark I hate it all I hate what I've become I hate what I've done I hate what's around me I hate how we're losing our, our commitment to the principles of honor, trust, authority uh, not authority. I did not mean authority. <sighs> the values that represent integrity and do the right thing in this, I thought my internal gearing that seemed to be able to embrace these thoughts to a level until oh, more of me was asked than I could give. <laughs> no. That's too generous a response. 
I thought the world was filled with do-gooders and the army of justice and and righteousness that just didn't really need me to do much to discourage their advancement. And it was oh, totally wrong. <sighs> That's the least stable sensation available I think to experience those TV show graphics where somebody's world has just flipped upside down where the screen gets all fucking melty yeah the world melted and then you start looking at things differently you start acting differently. You haven't decided anything. You aren't even aware you're doing it. You just, much like you pick up those times when something major is wrong, but you can't even describe the forces that are askew, you just can sense it now and again enough to know that this is new. Well, that's how I started seeing my own self. Because I would walk away from moments knowing I had just acted in a way I had never acted before. In perhaps similar circumstances or perhaps imagined responses to the circumstance I'm experiencing in that moment. Or deja vu or whatever. Or dreamland shit. <laughs> in every other way I evaluated myself to act with this sense of Disclosure, courage, uh, support, empathy, whatever. This one was new. I've never acted like that before. And I'm actually quite proud of the way I just acted. Those were words I maybe had never said to myself till I had turned late 40s. And then I just started cascading these events. I mean, like with my dad. Who I've never had any texture emotionally whatsoever. All of a sudden, I can't not say some things. I can't believe what's coming out of my mouth. I'm stunned. It's like I'm possessed. <laughs> so, that's what finally made me think what the fuck is going on? And what I noticed is I would no longer account in my own life for any slippery relationship with accountability and responsibility. Things I had never felt I had to build up as platforms. I mean, yeah, in the moment I would attempt to be these things, but if those were things that had to be dissolved to make the Kool-Aid taste better, I mean, shit. This is a transient world anyway, says the atheist who has no evidence of God. And so God knocks on my door and somehow I don't think I answered it. Somehow I think the door just opened. And this isn't a religious conversion moment, believe me. I don't even know. Still have no religious affiliation, still don't believe in religion at all is another avenue for anything other than the manipulation of the individual. But if your soul's talking to other souls, you can't help noticing it. Which is nutty as this guy could start having to give some credibility and the dreams were too blatant not to listen I'm not saying <clears throat> that the dreams were the only thing though in fact the dreams were just the framework that allowed the conversation to emerge in real time and then I started to understand I started to listen. 
to myself, to who I really am, for the first time in me ever. I started to know that that person had been quiet too long. And I had been talked into this opinion more than I had really developed it. But I understand now that I have been waiting for the encouragement, I guess, that you have to build from within to know that when push comes to shove, you will take responsibility. There is accountability. Because if you will act with honor, if you will be the person you most want to be, as plainly as that presents itself in a universe full of nonsense and irrelevant consequence, if you will see through all that unnecessary noise, to just stand steady as who you are. You will make a difference. You will not work toward it because you are it. And there's no need to even talk about it because you need to experience it. It's your life. Being who you are and righteously that person with the surroundings you will experience is why you're here. Well, that finally settled me down. And it's why I do this. Because I know uh, the world out there, it is all my fault. I never believed the world could be a place of influence of which I was a direct participant. And since I gave up on the fundamental rule, the very first rule of the game, well, if you're playing a game where everybody gets their own interpretation of the rules or gets slightly variant rule structures, what do you think is going to happen? Everybody ends up fighting over the end result, claiming they won and everybody else lost. Well, that's uh, as a strategist, self-labeled, understanding that you missed the very first rule of the game. Rule number one, believe in yourself at all costs. It's a little disappointing. But the best part about this universe is nobody's looking to see what disappointed you. They're looking to see what you got right. <laughs>